Gubernatorial races could be more important than ever in the upcoming midterms, especially after the Supreme Court decision leaving abortion up to the states. And Justice Clarence Thomas's suggestion that same-sex marriage and con contraception should also be left to the states. There are 36 governorships up for grabs across the country this November. In the battleground state of Ohio, former Dayton Mayor Nan Whaley is trying to defeat Republican incumbent Governor Mike DeWine and become the state's first Democratic governor in more than a decade. Nan Whaley, Democratic candidate for governor of Ohio, joins me now. Mayor Whaley, thank you for coming to The Sunday Show. Thank you. I'm great. It's great to be on. So Ohio hasn't had a Democratic governor since 2011. Why do you think you could change that this year? Well, what we see uh, as I've traveled across the state, Jonathan, and you know, been to all 88 counties on this campaign, is that folks are really ready for a change. They think the state is on the wrong track. Uh, and frankly, Ohio, what we see isn't like a red state or a blue state. It's just really fed up, both with the state and national situation where they aren't being paid attention to. And so we see an opportunity uh, to really take this state. And then you add on the extreme activities of Mike DeWine, particularly around abortion and gun safety. And we're seeing more and more women uh, change parties and decide that Mike DeWine isn't the right candidate for them. So there hasn't been much polling on your race. A survey back in May, which I point out is after the Alito uh, Supreme Court draft was, uh, was released, but before uh, Roe v. Wade was officially overturned. So this survey back in May showed Governor DeWine with a 15-point lead. I'm wondering, what's your in internal polling showing? Well, what we see uh, on all polls is the fact that Mike DeWine, even though he's been in office since I was 10 months old, for 46 years in this state, he never gets to 50 percent. Uh, he is known by everyone uh, because of how long he's been on the ballot, but people don't choose to vote for him. Even in his Republican primary, he only got 48 percent of the vote. And we see that with general election voters as well. They know him. He is at his ceiling, but he never, ever gets to 50. We have a real opportunity in this race, as we see, particularly around abortion access issues in the state. I mean, this is a state that at seven hours after Roe fell, Mike DeWine and Dave Yost push to put the six-week abortion ban. And every day we go somewhere, a, a Republican woman comes up to me and says, I was a Republican. I voted for Do Mike DeWine in 2018. I'm not going to do that now. You add the extremism he has done around gun safety, where he's been too weak to stand up to his party, arming teachers, bus driver drivers and cafeteria workers with very little training. This is something that concerns moms as they're headed, sending their kids back to school in the next couple of months. And these issues have become t top of mind, particularly for women in this state. Well, let's talk more about abortion, because uh, Ohio's abortion restrictions have been in the spotlight since a 10-year-old girl fled the state for Indiana to get mm -hmm. an abortion. But talk more. Are reproductive rights an issue in your race? It's a huge issue, Jonathan. Look, Ohio is a pro-choice state, and we are being governed by extremists and, and people like Mike DeWine who have been waiting for this moment. Mike DeWine has told uh, anti-abortion activists that he wants to go, and I'm quoting here, as far as possible. We already see the six-week ban in place, and we've seen national news and the ramifications for very young people that have been raped in our in our state. Mike DeWine's answer when the 10-year-old was raped in our in our state was that A, she didn't exist, and B, if she did exist, she was probably lying. When they arrested the rapist, Mike DeWine had two words, and they were no comment. And further, in the House right now at the State House is a bill that will ban uh, abortion at, with uh, conception, ban birth control like IUDs, and ban in vitro fertilization. And Mike DeWine has told folks he wants to go as far as possible. Now, think if you're 20 to 40 years old and you have a choice to live in Ohio as a woman. Do you think you're going to do that, considering you can't even make your own choices? This is going to have an economic ramification. And to your point, you know, we're talking about same-sex marriage, uh, rights overall. This will be a state that gets further and further behind because they're not letting people have the rights they, des they, they should have in this country here in Ohio. So, um, Mayor Whaley, President Biden's national job approval rating is underwater. And earlier this month, you didn't attend an event with him, with the president in Cleveland. How much of a drag is he on your race? 
Look, we don't see that very much in the state. You know, I'm you know I'm a local elected was a local elected official as a mayor, and this is a state race. And what we see is just the frustration people have at the state house from the state house. You know, this is a place where we see uh, uh, Republicans running this state, as you mentioned, for decades. And Mike DeWine's Ohio is a place where uh, our communities and our families have gotten further and further behind. Uh, that's, I think, the issue that we see across the state, that they're tired of the same old leadership in this state. And Mike DeWine uh, is responsible for how Ohio has been going, particularly these last four years, but these last 46. Well, I can I can understand you're potentially not wanting uh, an unpopular president vis-a-vis -vis job approval coming to campaign for you. So what I'm wondering is, what do you think the Democratic Party needs to do to help you uh, win this November? Look, I think the focus, particularly around issues like inflation, uh, are really important for this state. We've called on the governor to move forward, for example, with a price gouging executive order. Uh, we are one of the few states where it's still legal to price gouge consumers, for example, while we see this, you know, record inflation moving forward. We've called on the governor to bring the federal money directly into people's pockets with the th with a $350 inflation rebate, something, Jonathan, like states like Indiana have done, right? So these aren't even progressive states that have done this. It just gives relief to people that are experiencing it right now. And we've called on the governor to suspend the gas tax, 36 and a half cents a gallon, one of the top 10 most expensive gas tax in the country, and we can backfill that with rainy day funds to give people relief right now. These are actions that the state can do right now to help people and working families, and Mike DeWine has done nothing. You know, I don't know if you know that FBI has called the Ohio State House the most corrupt in the country, and what we see over and over again from Mike DeWine and his cohorts is they'll do anything when there's a big donor, big pharma, big oil, but nothing when it comes to working families. And real quickly, we have 15 seconds left, but I'm wondering, given what you've, what you've been saying about abortion and what you were just saying about pocketbook issues, which one of those two issues is the, most, the, the thing you hear about most in the campaign trail? Hey, Jonathan, they're completely connected, right? Abortion is an economic issue. We see these decisions being made by families to okay. leave the state because of that.